All right, buenos dias, mis amigos. Sign, sign, everywhere is sign. It's interesting to me because um, we are in a world where people seek a sign. All right, now this is very interesting, okay? Of course, if you know the Bible, you probably know where I'm going with this. To me, it's beyond obvious, but let's just sort of walk through this for maybe somebody that's new, okay? Somebody that's a, a beginner and seeking to learn, okay? So, let me walk through this for that person. All right, so let's start off. By going to let's look in the, let's look take a look at Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Okay. Now, as you might know, I don't script anything. I just drink coffee and go. All right. So we're just gonna let the spirit carry us. I don't really have this. My main focus is talking about the sign of the end times. Okay. So you see here. Uh, there's a couple of videos that I hope to get to. End time biblical signs. Uh, serious end times prophecies happening. All right, and then of course I got a story about when I was in Minneapolis, 1993. Maybe I hope I get to all that. But let's start here in Matthew 24. When uh, Jesus went out and departed from the temple. His disciples came to him for to show him the building of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. The disciples knew what Jesus was talking about. And Jesus was talking about the end of the world. This is prophesied all throughout the Old Testament. So this is not a new thing. But Jesus is being very specific here. Like I've said before, the New Testament reveals the things that are in the Old Testament makes it easier, clearer to understand. So Jesus is showing him all these buildings and saying, look, not one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. He's not talking about something that happened in 70 AD. Okay. Not, it's not because two things. One, not every stone was thrown down. And two, he's clearly referring to the end of the world. And three, the disciples know that. And as he sat down upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? See, they wouldn't be asking him about the end of the world if this total destruction was not in reference to the end of the world. Alright, so I want to focus on the, what shall be the sign of thy coming? Now, you see all these clowns that lack understanding talk about, oh, oh, look at this, there's floodwaters. Oh my goodness, that, that's a sign. No, that's not a sign. That's not a sign of Jesus coming. At all. 
Alright, and then... Oh, that's just long-haired stuff. Well, there wasn't there another video I had? Oh, this guy. Yeah, I was going to play some of this, but let's get back to this. Alright. Now, he does give a description of things leading up to the end that are happening right now. They've been happening and they're hap they're and they're happening now. These are not the signs. Okay. And let me give you one good reason why they're not. Um Let me, how do I put this, uh, then, well, there's only one way that I can think of, right? In Matthew 12, Matthew 16, Luke 11, um, there shall be no sign. When people gathered thick together, he began to say, this is an evil generation. They seek a sign, and there shall no sign be given it, but the sign of Jonas the prophet. All right, again in Matthew, there shall be, let's see, but he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. Now, <clears throat> if I could make it real simple, easy to understand, the sign of the prophet Jonas is the Lord Jesus Christ. And he has provided a way, he has provided us a way out of this wicked world. And that's the sign for the unsaved. There is no, oh, there's flood waters. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. No. It's Jesus has provided a way for us out of this wicked world. Believe in him. This, this, is just, this happens all the time, man. This, this sort of thing was happening when I was a kid. It's still happening. The biggest difference I see between now and 40 years ago, 50 years ago almost, is the news today is designed to scare the hell out of you. We're all going to die. Oh my God, it's going to rain tomorrow. It's going to flood and we're all going to die. And then here's the evidence. So many people died yesterday. The estimated so many people are going to die tomorrow. People are dying everywhere. Disaster. Devastation. And then, of course, well, we need our political leaders to step up. You know, we need Governor Schmitty to step in and give some other rich people money for whatever reason. Make us feel good about nothing. And then, you know, that way they can run their campaigns and say, hey, I donated this to this cause and this and that. I mean, it's all a big clown show and it's all, everything on the news is designed to scare you. This here, yeah, it's devastating. I think people underestimate the devastation of water and fail to correlate it with or compare it to the flood of Noah when the whole world was underwater. Now you think this is bad? It was really, really bad. Unsurvivable in the days of Noah. Okay, so back to the science now. So all these things are, are going to happen. And like for example, you shall you shall hear of wars and rumors of war. See that ye be not troubled. Don't be troubled by it. 
Oh, World War Three. But the uh, Arabs are going to nuke us randomly here in America. I was, uh, that's what they told us in 1980. I had nightmares about that. Well, I spent a lot of time thinking about that. You know, a 10-year-old kid being told, hey, it's possible that bad guys could send random missiles out of the sky they could land in your backyard and kill you and your family. Fear mongering. It's not a new thing, but it's just... Uh, it's, it's worse than ever before. Nation shall rise against nation. I mean, this is all business as usual. <clears throat> described here as the beginning of sorrows. Okay, so these things are going to happen, but the real sign is when Jesus appears in the clouds of heaven. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. All right, these are not the signs. All right. Oh, there's a war. The end is near. No. No, 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 no. The sign, when Jesus is asked, what is the sign of thy coming? The sign of his coming is him appearing in the clouds of heaven. <clears throat> Remember what I read here now. There shall no sign be given To it, to us, to the unsaved, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. Again, that, that sign is that Jesus has provided a way for us. That's the only sign you're going to have. When you see Jesus in the clouds of heaven, it is now over. There is no more opportunity to get saved. That's it. Okay. That's it. I think, really, that's it. I, I could stop right there. That's everything. That's everything I wanted to point out. There is no other sign. You know, there's no other sign, false Christ. That, just because you see false Christ, fall, oh, there's a false Christ. That means the signs, that means Jesus is coming. No, these are all things that are, be ha that are going to be happening. All these things. He is giving us fair warning of the wickedness of this world. It's not, well, this is going to happen, and then this is going to happen, and then we're going to see this prophecy happen, and then that prophecy is going to happen. And then when we get to this prophecy here, this will be the last prophecy, and then will be the end. No, 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 no. There are no list of prophecies that'll, that'll unveil themselves, if you will. And then the end comes. This is all things that have been happening and continue to happen. And I really, I think this is exactly why Jesus is telling us all these things is that we don't be troubled by these things that we're seeing in the world. All right? No matter how bad it may be, it may seem to be. Okay? Don't let these things trouble you. These things are part of the world. And there's a reason why this world's coming to an end. And these are all very good reasons for why. Okay. Now, of course, I gotta just, I gotta just point this out here. The, what's incredible here is that the very first thing that Jesus warns us of is, "Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I, Jesus, am Christ, and shall deceive many." All right. And we live in this world right now. 
where all these church leaders who went to seminary school, Bible colleges, they have their doctors and masters, they call themselves scholars and experts and theologians. They're the ones deceiving everybody. They don't believe in God at all. At all. That's the whole world is full of people like that. They got into the business because they figured it was an easy gig. They went to these brainwashing institutions when they were a 19-year-old snot-nosed kid. They went there when they had snot running down their nose and graduated and then got appointed their positions of power and influence. I know that's I know that's true. Think about this. Can you just walk into a church and take over the place? No. You can't. Cuz you didn't go to school. You didn't get appointed by a committee that controls that church. For example, right here in Kellogg, Iowa, we have a church on top of the hill that is owned by a group of people in Omaha, Nebraska. They're not even in the same state. It's like they're like 10 hours away. I mean, eight hours or whatever. I don't even know. They're a long ways away. Not even in the same state. And they appointed a guy from the next town over to be the high priest, if you will. It's a business. All right? It's a business. And I think once you understand that, that all these community churches, whether it's this town, next town over, in your community, wherever, it's a business. And it's all about getting money. And that's why we're in this situation that we are in. Because none of them believe. Because none of them believe, none of them have understanding. They all teach falsely. And so what chance do young people have today when the whole system is geared up against them? When they're looking for a way out. And then they go to these churches that they think will provide a way out, and they don't. They provide comfort and confusion. Because they don't know themselves. Uh, you get to feeling good, right? Your best life now, but you're going to hell later, right? It's interesting, um, because this is exactly what the Bible is telling us. Except those days be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. In other words, if God allowed things to play out the way they are, there would come a point to where there be nobody saved. In the days of Noah, only eight souls were saved. In the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, there was not even ten righteous. And then, of course, Jesus asked the question in Luke 18. Or he you know, poses the, the parable or whatever you want to call it. And he says, he, God will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith? on the earth will anybody believe I mean that's an incredible question right all right so let's go oh I, I love these uh, these comments I got I rarely get positive comments and I got two of them here from without mixture and burnt <clears throat> appreciate them very very much uh, just it tells me it's reassuring really that somebody's listening, right? All right, so where do I want to start here? 
Well, all right, before I, I'm going to get into these real quickly. All right, Larry, Larry, the loophole. He says the last days were in the first century. Now, this is a great example of somebody that's completely delusional. And, you know, I wish I could help Larry. You know, what's your advice for Larry? And the guy doesn't believe nothing the, the Bible says. So what What can I say? What can I say? Can I put him in a headlock until he, until he says he believes, he gets it, he understands? I mean, what can I do, really? And when 105-1919 says, what century is this? Because Larry says, the last days were in the first century. And Wedden says, I don't know if it's Wedden, Whedon. What century is this? Those were the last days, but 20 more centuries passed by? Oh, what are you talking about, Larry? Well, what happened here, Larry? Did you delete one of your comments? Hold on a second. Because I know he responded to Wedden. Hey, buenos dias. Oh, buenos dias. Larry, what happened? Are you deleting comments, buddy? Yeah. <laughs> why, why would you delete that comment? You replied to Wedden. I saw it. Well, anyways, do not matter, does it? I mean, you're st still delusional, Larry. So, so I chime in, you know. I don't really typically like to interfere in other people's conversations. But I understand, you know, people get busy and I want to, I want this conversation to continue. And so I said, uh, the resurrection has passed already. And Larry Loophole says, yes. Yes. Oh, that's brilliant, man. That I mean, it's like, hey, let me wear a shirt that says, I don't know what the Bible says. I have no idea. Hey, everybody. I have no idea what the Bible says. Second Timothy 2, verse 18, who concerning the truth have erred. Uh-oh, Larry. Oh, boy. Larry. Larry, Larry, Larry. Who concerning the truth have erred. Saying that the resurrection is past already. All right, Larry Loophole, here's your challenge, buddy. Here's gonna. This is gonna be hard for you now. All right, I want you to spend a lot of time thinking. Where am I at? Here? Thinking very seriously about this. What happened? Did he delete it already? Oh, I'm in the wrong place. Where am I at here? Come on. So, you know, the last days were in the first century. The resurrection has passed already. Yes, well, it says Larry the loophole. Larry found a loophole. But I want to hear his explanation for 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 18. That says, who, concerning the truth, have erred, saying that the resurrection has passed already. Yes, it's passed already. And overthrow the faith of some. Larry, what are you doing? Seriously, have you no fear of God? No fear of God at all? To, I mean, just to make that statement, it's as though you have no fear. No fear at all.
Romans chapter 3, verse 18. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Talking about Larry the Loophole. No fear. Now, of course, the fear of God is what? In the beginning of something. Maybe this is the wrong wording. Yeah. See? The fear of the Lord. Same thing. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Oh. So, you want to start off fearing God. Right? I mean, how are you ever going to understand anything if you don't fear God? How are you ever going to get saved if you have if you never have any fear of God? Right? A good understanding. Have all they that do his commandments, his praise endureth forever. The fear of God is the beginning of knowledge. Oh, beginning of wisdom all right and that's the <clears throat> that's that really uh, the wisdom in my mind you know um, share your thoughts if it, if you have a different view of what wisdom means wisdom means uh, the quality of having there you go. okay knowledge and good judgment. Okay, I was gonna. There we go. That's the the, the ability to have good with uh, good judgment. All right. So having the knowledge, of course, and the experience, I don't disagree with that at all. But having wisdom is having that that sense, that ability to make good decisions. Wisdom, and that comes with age, right? I mean, when I was young. Not that I'm, I'm barely wiser, but when I was young, I was just making decisions and rolling with it. You know, you'd, you'd be told, hey, don't eat these cookies in the cookie jar. Well, I go, go ahead and eat the cookie in the cookie jar and see what happens. And then learn my lesson that way, right? Bad, that's a bad philosophy. It doesn't, it's no good. Believe me, I tried it. It's no good. I've darn near made every mistake in the book. Thinking, well, hey, I'll make the mistake, I'll learn. Whew, that's, yeah, I can't advise that. I mean, you want to learn from your mistakes, no doubt, but don't be so stupid as to deliberately make mistakes to see what kind of consequences you'll suffer, okay? Don't do that. Don't be dumb like me. Okay, and the fear, and that knowledge, of course, is obtaining, um, you know, experience and information to help make you wise, right? But, I mean, it, it all starts with the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Fear. You want to have fear of our maker. The one that can deliver you to the pits of hell and cause you to die the second death. Fear him. He's the one that made you. He's the one that brought you into this world. He's the one that can take you out of this world. Okay. All right, okay, all right, okay. So, Larry. Larry, the loophole. What's going on, buddy? 2 Timothy 2.18. You notice here, who concerning the truth have erred. And here also in Second Timothy chapter 2, we read, Study 
to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Well, Larry found himself a loophole where, what did you do, Larry? You, you went in and you tore that page out of your Bible? You, is that what you did? You think, oh, I'll just rip that out of there. Now it doesn't exist. Is that how you found your loophole, Larry? I mean, what do you think, man? I, I, you think I don't know what the Bible says? Is that it? You know, you think I don't take this stuff very serious? Is that what's going on? Man, I think people are mistaken when they underestimate me and under, uh, underestimate God. Seriously, what are you doing? You think you're getting away with something? You think because you don't know, because you're stupid, you think, well, everybody else is stupid too, so what's the difference? Ah, you know what? That's a mistake. That's a big mistake. Don't think, don't look at somebody as though they don't know nothing. Don't look at somebody as though they're dumb. No matter how dumb you might think they are, they could very well be much smarter than you. And believe me, I made that mistake. Over and over in my life, not realizing I'm the dumb one. I'm the dumb one. And so that's why I've been so adamant to learn the Word of God every day. Not just in the beginning, but every single day. And this goes back to Matthew 6. When the prayer, give us this day our daily bread, right? We want to read the Bible every day. The daily bread is the Word of God. Give us this day the Word of God. Give us this day our daily bread. The daily bread is the Word of God. All right, so what What was I going to... Oh, let's play these videos here. Let's get back to this. I mean, to me, these are interesting. Adam, in 1984, he shows all these uh, news clips, and, and they're, they're very interesting. To me, the, when I see this, these floods... It reminds me of the days of Noah, and it, it's just interesting how destructive water is, okay? And then, of course, knowing how destructive water is, can you imagine the whole world being on fire and how destructive that's going to be? In the days of Noah, the water was way up here, all around the world. I can't remember. Does anybody... I'm talking to the cats. Anybody remember how high it was? And the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth, and all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered 15 cubits, which is 22, 3 feet, a foot and a half per cubit. 15 cubits, I mean, <laughs> wow. 15 cubits upward did the water prevail, and the mountains were covered. The mountains were covered. And so look at this, man. What are we doing here? Not this one either. Where are, where are we at here? Look at this. There's some mountains right there. We see how, look how devastating this is. We got water at the bottom of these, all these buildings. What are these, all apartment buildings? Man, this, I tell you what, I couldn't live in. You got all these people crammed in one place. Makes I see this and it makes me appreciate small town Kellogg, Iowa. It's different. It's much different. This is... What's going on here, fellas? You got a million people in this little... Imagine this whole place. Was underwater. Would have been underwater in the days of Noah. 
the waters were not just up to the top here, but over 20 feet above, right? These people had no chance. This, this is a mud puddle compared to the days of Noah. And you want to say this is a sign of God that Jesus is coming? No, 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 no. It's interesting. For sure, it's devastating, no question about it. I'm not sure I want to see that stuff right there. What's going on? I mean, this here, for example, you don't know how deep that is. You can say, well, before the water came, that was two, three feet. But then you don't know. Like the examples of given sinkholes, this could be 20 feet. The water could collapse underneath there and you wouldn't know it. And you could get in, if you stepped into that water, you could fall straight down. And an undercurrent can take you. The water is so dangerous. Okay. Just like what we read in Genesis 7, all flesh died that moved upon the earth. Fowl, cattle, beasts, creeping thing, and every man. All in whose nostrils was the breath of life. All right, absolute devastation here. Let's do a little fast. Wait, let me go back to that. What was that that I just saw? That right there. Is that moving water? No. Barely. Oh, somebody's driving through it. See, I w you don't know if this collapsed and there's a big hole under there and then flowing waters underneath that go under the ground. And that if you were to fall into that hole, you would fall into that current. That current could be, you know, for example, a underlying current. Yeah, I don't know if people like in these big cities even know that sort of stuff. You know, me growing up on the river, I got I, in my mind anyway. I got a better understanding that there are currents in the river, not just one flowing body of water. But there's different levels of water movement. Some fast, some slow. And, uh, and so also is the case when you have flooding. You could have pockets of uh, where the ground collapses. And then underwater or underground creeks or rivers, whatever you want to call them. And it's so very dangerous. And not only that, another thing you got to watch out for is if there's something in the water that could uh, that you could get caught up in, and like a tree, a plant, anything, debris that could pull you under, and then put you in a situation where you can't get up, even though you're laying on your back and you're only a couple of feet. The water's only a couple of feet deep. You can't get up. And then you panic. People panic. And it's, it's so scary. It really is. And then you look back in the days of Noah. And if you understood, if you understand all that, I, I think man, it gives you greater appreciation for the end of the world that was and the end of the world that's coming. All right, and so let me fast forward through this. I don't know what to think about these sinkholes. I, there's, I don't know about this. I don't know what's going on here. Honestly, I don't know because that's not just random. It was what's causing that here? I don't understand. It doesn't matter. I don't care. Just fast forward through all this stuff. I mean, it, it's interesting, 
But these are not signs that, hell, oh, hey, there's snow on the tree. Jesus is coming. All right. <laughs> None of these are signs. None of these are biblical signs. All right. Number one, they're not the sign of Jonas. And number two, they're not the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. But the only sign that we have right now is the sign of Jonas. And that's for the unsaved to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Okay, so anyways, I, I just wanted to point that out. What do we got here? Serious error. Oh, here, if I could real quickly. I forget. Remember that five-minute mark here. No one upholds me against these, except Michael, your prince. The title prince is important because it indicates there is a hierarchy. There are angels, seraphims, cherubims, and then archangels like Michael. And on the... All right, so he's just making stuff up. I'm not going to get into all that stuff, but... the opposite scale, there are evil spirits and demons, and then there are principal evil spirits, like the... Prince of Persia? Prince of Persia, as highlighted earlier. This is important because of that opening verse in Daniel chapter 12. Michael, the archangel who stands guard over your nation, will arise. We're told that even though the earth will see tremendous anguish... God's people will be delivered. Keep this in mind as we dive in further. In Daniel 12, we're told that a time of trouble is coming such as never was since there was a nation. Let's put this into context. Look at all of the different periods in history. A time is coming that's worse than the antediluvian period which was between the fall of man and the great Genesis flood. A time is coming that's worse than when the Roman Empire ruled and there was widespread Christian that's persecution. It, right there. That's it. It's going to be worse than... What? That's worse than when the Roman Empire... When the Roman Empire ruled. See, now this is interesting because... You only make a statement like that if you... Think you're talking to people that have no idea what the Bible says. Alright. Alright. And obviously, I think it's coming from people that have absolutely no idea what the Bible says. Now, Daniel speaks of four beasts until the end of the world. All right, and he makes it clear that the, the four beasts are four kings which shall rise out of the earth. They are four kingdoms. And he names the first three kingdoms, which is the Babylonian kingdom, the Medes and Persian kingdom, and the Grecia, which is the Greek kingdom, or the Greek empire. He names those three. All right, so we can conclude by reading, for example, the New Testament. It's all over the place, but... One specific place that I go to that makes it uh, clear. Oops, I hit the wrong one. That makes it very plain to see, easy to understand, is Luke chapter 2. When Caesar decreed that the whole world should be taxed. Right? So that right there, that means he had power over the whole world Caesar being a Roman that means the Roman Empire has to be the fourth beast right has to be the fourth beast and we know that Daniel says the the, the fourth beast is the last kingdom and then of course the kingdom that comes after that is eternal life uh, the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ, which endures forever. All right. And so, by admitting that the Romans ruled and they were bad guys, 
you have to you have to come to grips with the fact that the Romans are still in charge today. All right. And again, the New Testament makes it easier for us to see. All right. It reveals and clarifies everything that's in the Old Testament. All right, so in Revelation 17, when we read, this is just one example, okay, one example. But when we read, the beast that was, this is, the, the beast of Revelation is, is the Roman Empire. It's no other empire. The Greek Empire is long done away with before Jesus, baby Jesus was even born. So, when baby Jesus was born, the Romans were in power. So the fourth beast of Daniel was in power. And that's the Roman Empire. We have not yet reached eternal life. Okay? We haven't gotten there yet. That happens at the end of the world. So, therefore, the beast of Revelation has to be the Roman Empire. And here we got a great description to help us understand the beast that was and is not and yet is. All right. The proper way to understand this is very simple. The Roman Empire was a physical empire that transitioned into a spiritual empire. Huh? The great whore denotes a religious organization. All right. The mother of harlots. This mother denotes a religion, a religious organization. All right. And so the great whore is the Roman Catholic Church which reigns over the kings of the earth. All right, that means they reign over they reigned over Obama, they reigned over Trump, they reigned over Bush. They all bow to the Pope and Rome. And there might be more than just bowing. Okay. I'm, I'm being serious about this. When you look at Sodom and Gomorrah, and you you see that hey, what what was going on back then is going on today. I you know what? I think this world is much worse than what we can imagine. And we're <laughs> we're not we're not in a good place. It's only getting worse. And we need to get out of this place. ASAP. All right, so, I mean, I mean, I could go over and over on this, but I need to wrap it up. I think I've gone beyond 15 minutes, but uh, the, the, and they cause the, the, this new beast, whatever, causes the whole world to worship the first beast. <laughs> uh, I, I'm not sure if I got the wording right. Yeah, he actu in Revel uh, Revelation 13, he exercises all the power of the first beast. This is the first beast and the second beast are the same beast. It's the difference between the physical empire and the spiritual empire. Right? So the second beast causes everybody in the world to worship the first beast, which would be your local government, which represents what we would have known as the physical empire. Meanwhile, the second beast, the Roman Catholic Church, rules it all. They, they run the whole show, the world, and they're coming to an end. And this is, again, I, you know, I could go on and on and on and on and on. Get out of her 
my people these are not war these are not vain words I, well they're not that's not even in the bible is it oh all right all right i got i got to wrap this up right where am i at get out of her no Maybe I'm wrong about everything. I don't know. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come! Come out of her. Not get out of her, but get out of her. Come out of her. Get out of there. Right. Come out of her, my people. That's talking about those people that love the Lord Jesus Christ and are born of God yet they attend a Catholic church come out of her my people don't be a part of that organization get out come out of her see God is calling you to come out See, I said it incorrectly. It, it's not get out. It's come out toward, come out to God. Come out of her. Come this way. Right? Okay. And then uh, it's a five minute mark. I, you know, th this idea, I mean, come on, this is stupid. What? So the Romans ruled. Now, what? There's not a dead period in Daniel 7. There's no dead period. There's four kings until the end of the world. And the fifth kingdom is the everlasting kingdom that endures forever. I mean, this is complete ignorance right here. So let's go to the five-minute mark. I don't remember what he says. I'm going to make this as quick as possible. They will wake up to eternal life in heaven with God or eternal hell. Once again, the Bible lets us know that everyone is really in only one of two camps. They are either followers of Christ or followers of the devil. Your name will either be in the book of life or it won't. You're either walking on the broad road or the narrow road. And as Daniel 12 verse 2 points out, those who have been buried will wake up to either everlasting life or everlasting disgrace. This is the picture painted in the Bible. From this, we can understand that there is a resurrection that will occur when the Lord Jesus comes for his church. The Apostle Paul in 1 Thessalonians says, The dead in Christ rise first. What we aren't sure of is whether this is the same resurrection as that in Daniel 12, or does Daniel 12 refer to another resurrection? All right, that's where we got stupid, all right? I'm not even going to listen to this, this anymore. Daniel 12, chapter 2. Many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. This is so obvious. I mean, you've got to be purposely stupid. you got to be stupid on purpose to think this is anything other than when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. There is no other resurrection. It is appointed unto man once to die, and then after this, judgment. The judgment... Uh, what, what's going on here? I can't. My miss. It is appointed unto man once to die, and then after this judgment. What's going on here? Men. <laughs> Alright, okay. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. That's when we will all be resurrected. I mean, there's so many places we can go to. Revelation chapter 1, for example. Revelation chapter 1. And every eye shall see him, even they which pierced him. Even they which actually stuck the sword or whatever in into the side of Jesus. 
Those guys, they're dead now. But they're going to see when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. There's, there's only one possibility. And that's when everybody is resurrected. We, as that fellow points out, we that are God's people, we will rise up. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Rise, that means ascend up into the clouds. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. All of us that are born of God, all of us that are God's people will be lifted up out of this world and all the unsaved people will be resurrected and be gathered together at our feet. We will all stand before God. Those of us that are saved will be lifted up. Those that are not saved will be left on the earth. And first they will be made to they will be made known. God will make it known to them. Even though they've died, God has caused them to be resurrected and they will stand there at our feet. And at that moment they will know that they're going to perish forever and that God has loved us. All right? It's a big deal. It's a big deal so that's the, it's the only right thing to do is to make all these unsaved ungrateful disrespectful heathens huh God's going to make them know that we have eternal life we are God's people and we will live forever and then God's going to destroy them of course and they're going to die the second death. But there's going to be that moment. Here in Revelation 3 verse 9. Behold I will make them of the synagogue of Satan. Which say they are Jews and are not. But do lie. Behold I will make them to come and worship before thy feet. And to know that I have loved thee. And it's important to know that this is not just one group of people going to be at our feet. It's going to be the whole entire world of the unsaved. Are going to be at our feet including this group of these people that claim to be God's people and they're not they're liars the whole world of unsaved people will be at our feet at that moment and then fire will come down and destroy the whole the whole thing and so that all oh, this idea oh we just can't know what are you talking about man you're admitting that you're an unsaved devil when you say I can't well we can't know I mean really I don't think you use an excuse that well I just don't know what the Bible says. I don't think that's sufficient I don't think that is any good at all I mean think about this Jesus says and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free he says ye shall know the truth now is he lying well, you can't, we can't know the truth. Oh, you know, some experts say this and some scholars say that. No, 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 no. Are you depending on experts and scholars to tell you what the truth is? You don't believe God then. By your own words, by your own omission. Even in, what, what is it, Matthew 5 or 7 or somewhere in the Bible, it says, Seek and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened. I think. Ask, and ye shall receive. Right? Matthew 7. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find it. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Now this is true. I know it to be true firsthand 
But you effectively call Jesus Christ a liar when you say we can't know if there's going to be 14 resurrections in 22 ends of the world. So we just can't know anything about anything. You know, because the experts and the scholars they're they're arguing about it and they they're trying to figure it out and they're sitting in a room right now discussing it. We don't know until they're finished talking about it. No, 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 no. I mean, really? Isn't that what you're implying? That there's a group of men sitting in a room discussing this, trying to figure out what the truth is, and we can't know what the truth is until they figure it out. Huh? Man, I'm telling you, it's just one after another, which serves as evidence. Clear evidence that we have to be very very close to the end 